So moving uh, moving on to talk about uh, the Sega Nomad story. This is one that I did not think I would be talking about in uh, in 2019. Very, very odd, awesome story. So this one is actually, like, I'm really hyped about the story, but again, did not think we would be discussing this uh, in 2019. So let me get the article right here. Open that baby up. Where are you, Sega Nomad? Sega Nomad story. Where did you? There, found it. Okay, so... Uh, we'll be starting this in three, two, one. All right, guys. So moving on to our next story, we're talking about the Sega Nomad. But interestingly enough, not the Sega Nomad that everybody used to know—the one that probably is going for way too much online. I'm not looking up those prices. I don't want to add to that uh, calamity. But I'm sure they're not going for cheap online. Yet Retrobit is releasing a new Sega Nomad what so here and by the way if you don't know about the sega nomad the sega nomad is a handheld sega console that could actually play older uh, sega genesis games however at the time the nomad did have some compatibility issues so the nomad specifically had compatibility compatibility issues we're doing this live folks compatibility issues with uh want to make sure i get the exact game here uh with uh come on where's the exact game it's in the article itself. Come on, game. 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 Where did you go? This is why doing this live is terrible. Um, what I will say, though, is... Speaking on the new Sega Nomad, it does not seem like it will have Mega Drive support, which is frustrating because Japanese games are amazing and usually much cheaper than US games. Yes, they're in Japanese, but of course, back then, not every single game is text heavy. Some you might just be able to play without uh, any text whatsoever. By the way, Virtual Racing was the game that, when looking at something like the Genesis 3, uh, had issues. I'm sorry, the Nomad did not have those original issues. It was the Genesis 3 that had them, and, and the reason why that's relevant is because, of course, the Nomad was made by Sega, so Sega had all those parts available. When third-party companies come in and make any kind of clones, be it of Sega Genesis's, and, and even with the with the Sega Genesis 3, yes, that had Sega Genesis as a name, but that wasn't developed by Sega. It was a license by Majesco. We've talked about Majesco before on other Matt Rants. Definitely look them up. Very interesting history about them. So, when looking at uh, the Sega Nomad, though, we don't know if it'll have compatibility issues, which does suck because there are certain Sega Genesis games that use the Gen Genesis hardware in ways, not just like Virtual Racing, but others that actually rely on that hardware to do different puzzles and things like that. So we, it is a little troublesome, a little worrisome. However, yes, even though that is the case, that could uh, be a potential issue. When looking at the fact that this could play the majority of the Sega Genesis library as a handheld, also uh, that it is Retrobit who does have a... They don't have a spotty history, so that's a good thing. Um, I don't think they have a spotty history. If you do, tell me in the chat, tell me comment section down below, but I'm pretty sure they've actually been on point with some of their... Um, some of their consoles. Uh, they've actually been pretty on point with some of their releases of retro video games. I have actually have Holy Diver up there. I love that collection. I wish it was translated to English, but again, most of it's in English anyway. Some of, Most of it's in Romanized, but the problem is there's certain things that aren't in English, but they're not like Japanese texts that I can't read. I can just read them in English, uh, in English text, but they're still Japanese. Either way, though, the game's still playable. Like that game. Gonna do a review on it on our... Uh, those guys play channel in the near future but i liked it regardless so when it comes to their video games i haven't seen any issue with them but uh maybe there are with their their hardware so this isn't as as uh, happy go lucky as i'm making it seem but for me i think it's interesting because i do have some friends who are fans of the sega nomad and it did seem like that was just a something that was dead in the water no one was going to take a look at it yes you'd have other companies coming in like at games Ag at games who would release you know portable genesis's but they would be uh you know with games added onto it not sega nomad like where you could actually plug in your original sega genesis cartridges which to me is amazing also where this could potentially do a lot better than the original sega nomad is that it actually uh the original sega nomad had six double a batteries and apparently it used them used them all up all six in three hours 
So that does become a problem. Now, of course, in this case, I'm probably, I mean, I'm sure they're going to include uh, some way to charge it. That definitely would be a way to improve this thing uh, instead of having rechargeable batteries, which were also a little bit problematic. Uh, and another thing is this can do as well is it could output to the TV in HDMI. So the fact that this thing could actually output in HDMI. So if you want to uh, record footage, now I know some people might say, well, why don't you just use an original Sega Genesis at this point? But here's the thing though. If the emulation on here is not spotty, so if it's amazing emulation and it's HDMI, uh, you can do HDMI outputs, that would potentially mean that this is better than most Sega Genesis consoles on the market. Uh, like Sega Genesis, you know, uh, clone consoles on the market. Because of course, the original Sega Genesis does not output HDMI. So yes, you can record footage from it, but it'll look a little iffy. And yes, you could say, well, Matt, just get the, um, why don't you get the Frame Meister? It's like 400 bucks, man. <laughs> like that's a lot of money. So putting Frame Meister aside and stuff like that, if you are uh, looking at something like this, it, it would be very interesting, especially if this is in a, you know, the $100 price point around that area. To be able to spend money on this, it plays most of the Sega Genesis library and it outputs an HDMI with a clear picture. And of course, that screen, which we can see here uh, in the article listed, the screen looks amazing. Mm -hmm. That, uh, but again, we can't see what it's playing just yet, so we'll have to see how it would look. But still, I do think that that would be very interesting. And as long as it isn't close to two hundred dollars, if it's like one hundred eighty bucks, I think it'll be a bit too niche. But if it's a hundred, maybe one hundred and twenty at most, that would be amazing. I would potentially be interested in picking one up because I would like like to see how it can actually output HDMI. Because yes, there's a lot of cool clone consoles out there, but. Still, some people have talked about the HDMI output being a little spotty, depending on where you're getting it. So, I would be interested to check this thing out. Tell me if you guys would in the comment section down below or in the chat. And I just think that it's really cool that we're getting to a point, even still in 2019, where these, you know, older uh, game consoles are still being looked at. These handhelds are still being looked at and improved in ways, if you will. And uh, one thing I will say is I hope the D-pad... D-pad looks good, but I hope that the D-pad... Um, is sturdy because I'll say that's the one thing that any clone console will always be it handhelds or be it uh, just a, a new controller for uh, a, a physical game console. The D pad, there always there's always some issue now and again. So if this D pad has issues, that I think would be a detriment to this console. So let's hope that uh, the D pad works. That's what I'll say uh, as we're uh, wrapping this one up.